Okay, we're almost done. It's a little damp out here, so this antler tip is kind of uh, crumbly. Actually, I think this antler got wet. I'm working right on the uh, buffalo horn pad. I'm not trying to drive flakes right now, I'm just trying to sharpen the edge. Getting rid of the lumpy spots on the edge. That's good enough. It's a simple knife. I could draw, uh, drive the uh, notches further with a punch maybe, but uh, that's good enough like that. The uh, buffalo horn, I don't know if you noticed, but it, it grabs on very well and it can remove flakes, but it wears down very quickly. I'm going to try to grab that edge right there. And peel off a flake. Now what's interesting is the buffalo horn was out here with the antler. It did rain a little bit. But the, antler horn, the uh, buffalo horn doesn't seem to be as affected by water as the antler. It feels the same as it did last night before it got wet. So that might be an interesting, interesting property to take advantage of. The uh, Buffalo horn seems to be more water resistant. But it is hard to maintain a sharp point to remove the small finishing flakes. I'm using the beaver tooth now. I can see how it could be useful for making small serrations. So we know it works well on heat treated stone. I guess the test would be to see how well it works on uh, raw stone. I suppose if I wrap a uh, piece of leather around it, it'd be more comfortable to hold it.
ending into ten and a half minutes, so I'm gonna stop here. I am fascinated by the beaver tooth, the ability to do serrations with the beaver tooth. I'm not sure if we could actually do notches with it. I suppose we could put a sharp sharp notch in with the beaver tooth. But uh, we'll stop there. We'll experiment more later.